Every time I do a video on TV licensing, some of the same questions pop up again and again, and some of those I cannot definitively answer. And that's not because I can't find the answer, it's not because I'm not good at what I do, it's because sometimes there is no definitive answer. Let me give you an example. I asked some of these questions to the BBC press office, and whilst they said that they didn't want to give me any comment, they did agree to provide some kind of guidance on the questions that I was posing. Questions such as, when does a YouTuber doing live streams come within the remit of a television program service and thus require you to have a TV license? For our international viewers, yes, we still require a TV license for watching or recording live TV in the United Kingdom. Other questions involve what defines whether or not a company is a television program company providing television program services. Those are the kind of questions that I posed. And as I said, in response to those questions, the BBC press office did not want to provide a comment as such, but provided the following guidance. A TV license is needed to legally watch or record television programmes live, as we all know, i.e. as they are transmitted and received by the rest of the audience on any channel, via any platform and on any device, and to watch or download BBC programmes on BBC iPlayer. Now this also cuts across the question of being transmitted live. So if something is transmitted and is received, even if it is on a plus one, it's still a live broadcast, even though it's one hour after the main show. And if you pause the programme part of the way through, that is still a live broadcast for the purposes of the legislation. Moving on, this includes programmes on free and paid for channels received via an aerial, via a subscription satellite or cable television service, for example, Sky or Virgin Media, or streamed online channels received on any platform or device from overseas at the same time as they are being broadcast in the host country. So this also cuts across the question as to whether or not you receive a live TV broadcast from another country. That is also caught within the TV licensing regulations. So if, let's say, you're watching a TV program service from India and it's being transmitted live from India to the UK on any platform, on any device, and you're watching it or recording it, then yes, you need a TV license for that as well. But it gets better or worse, depending on how you look at it. Channels streamed online at the same time as they are being received by the other members of the audience, whether or not they are also being broadcast by other means. So this would be online by any platform to the audience, streamed online live. So for example, YouTube, that will be important a little bit later. This means that for YouTube, a license is needed to watch programs on channels streamed live, but not on demand content, which is probably the vast majority of content on YouTube, but not all of it. And a growing amount of it is live, which again is important to come back to later, because there's a very dangerous line that I think this is going to cross at some point, but that line at the moment is still blurred. Hence what I now think is going to be the thumbnail and title of this video, which I think this whole law is flawed from my professional point of view. And I'll explain why at the end, so keep watching. Also, no license is needed for content that cannot reasonably be regarded as forming part of a television program service. Now, pausing for the cause for a moment here, I think this is part of the problem. Because in order for the TV license to be required, it must, according to this guidance, be something that can reasonably be regarded as forming part of a television program service. Now, this gives rise to the question that many of you have asked, and I'm sorry that I cannot definitively answer it for you because it's not really defined in legislation. But that's a question that I will come back to in this guidance and my view on the whole thing for what it's worth. Nonetheless, back to the guidance, no license is needed for content that cannot be reasonably regarded as forming part of a television program service. For example, non-broadcast content, such as on-demand video clips, YouTube, and other user-generated content. User-generated content. I'm a user of sorts of YouTube, so I'm generating content, so I'm generating user-generated content. If you pop up a YouTube channel, you are a user generating user generated content. So you and I, according to this bit of the guidance, cannot reasonably be regarded as forming part of a television program service. Therefore, we are generating user generated content. Therefore, it doesn't require a TV license. But 
it gets even more blurred than that. Let's read on. For a service to require a license to watch, it must be a television program service. A number of factors would be taken into account when considering this. For example, whether a service has a regular schedule of programs, how continuous a service is, editorial control and consistency, and the quality of production or editorial values. Now, let's just break this apart for a moment because this may or may not apply to me. Now, for the avoidance of doubt, I do not think that this applies to me. I do not think you should require a TV license to watch me if I do live streams, separate, of course, from my user-generated content, which is on demand and not live because TV license only applies to live TV, remember? But taking this into account, let's take let's break this apart a little bit. A number of factors taken into account when considering it. So the first of all, whether a service has a regular schedule of programs. Well, I have a regular schedule of programs. I've been uploading videos every day now for, what, two years or thereabouts or even more than two years. I can't remember now. Um, how continuous a service is. Well, continuous, same thing, really. Uh, is it a continuous uh, schedule of programs? Um, as, as well as a regular schedule of programs. Mine's both continuous and regular. But I still don't believe that I come within the definition of a television program service, at least not what reasonably should be considered to be so. Editorial control. No one's uh, controlling my editorial content whatsoever. It's just me. Consistency. Well, yes. No, what What is consistent? Consistent with what? Um, who, who would I be compared with? That doesn't really make sense consistency it yeah it's just my content it, it is what it is and the quality of the production or editorial values well this to some degree you can make up your own mind because sometimes i screw up the lighting sometimes i screw up the cameras sometimes i screw up the microphones i'm not a professional videographer or anything of that nature i bought some nice equipment so that it probably looks better i'd like to think that it looks better but um, production and editorial values, um, I'm just helping you understand law. No one's dictating to me what kind of values that I talk to you about on here. It's just me. So with all that in mind, all those factors, even if one were to argue that I do come within the remit of a television program service, I would strenuously argue that I should not because I'm not a TV company, I'm a barrister helping you to understand law. So by the way, please smash that like button and subscribe because if you want to receive more content like this for free, essentially on YouTube, then please do. And if you want to support me in my channel and my growth and my mission and endeavor to help you understand law, there's a whole bunch of donation links in the box below where you can contribute to me for all the effort that I put into this. Keyboard Warriors, this is your opportunity to uh, complain about me uh, putting donation links and things like that in the box below. But uh, obviously no one reads those, so um, you're, you're only wasting your own time, really. Anyway, um, moving on. Um, so for a service to require a license, it must be a television program service. And it depends on a number of those factors. So what what do you take from that? Well, if you take something like Sky, for example, Sky News, it clearly is a uh, regular schedule of programs. It's a continuous service. It's uh, got editorial control. There's a whole bunch of people that are in control of it. The consistency, the quality, the production, the edit. You could probably see why Sky News would be considered to be a television program service. But what if it's not so clear? What if you get some other companies that are not as clear cut and straightforward as Sky News or any other kind of news channel program, whatever? How are you to decide? And this is a question many of you have quite rightly asked me in the comments section. How do we know? How do we know if it's a television program service? How do we know if it's a television program company, broadcasting company, and so on and so forth? Well, for one thing, it might have a license, but where do you look for for that? Most people don't know. But one way of looking this up might be to find out whether it's a company which has a TV broadcasting license. I've never really done such a thing, and I make these videos for you. So um, actually, that's not quite true. I have looked that up before now, but I wouldn't regularly do that, is my point. I wouldn't regularly say, I'm about to watch this TV program company, or maybe it's a TV program company. Let's go and look it up and see if they've got a license, and then see if I think it's a television program service. I just wouldn't do it. And moreover, I don't think it can be expected that most people will do that. I think the reverse. I think most people will not do that. So I don't think that's reasonable in any event. So we lead to the conclusion of this, which would be, well, there ought to be a defined list. 
For example, if we talk about weaponry, now I've commented on this before, there are a certain list of things that are banned and very simple descriptions of what those are. An item that does this or looks like that or is made up of this or is designed for that or whatever it might be. There is a list of these banned items. You can find it on the CPS website. You can find it on the government website. You can find it on all sorts of websites. And news companies are very good at pushing these out and making it quite clear to everybody that these are banned items, sort of shuriken stars, for example, flick knives, um, gravity knives, concealed staff swords and things like that. Those, These kind of things are all banned. The point of this is there's a definitive list of these things and anything that looks like one or seems to be designed like one is going to be banned for the purposes of the legislation. So you might then reasonably infer that you should or you really ought to have a definitive list of TV companies that come within the remit of producing television program services because remember you don't need a license if you're watching something live from something that is not reasonably considered to be a television program service so one of my questions that i put to the bbc press office was please may i have a list a definitive list of these television program companies my question was actually quite specific it said where is a member of the public able to find a definitive list of companies that do classify as a tv company for the purposes of a license the response that came back in my view is what potentially makes this whole TV licensing law flawed. Here's what the guidance came back with. We don't produce a list of the kind you request. The media landscape changes continually with new market entrants and changing services, so it simply isn't possible for TV licensing to do this. We would expect that the content from the majority of independent YouTube creators wouldn't fit the criteria for a television program service. So there it is, really. We would expect, they say, as guidance, that the content from the majority of independent YouTube creators wouldn't fit the criteria of a television program service. However, if, and this is why I think the law is flawed, if you wanted to be absolutely certain that you are not breaking the law with regard to TV licensing, and you wanted to consult a definitive list of TV program companies, or as I put it in my question, a definitive list of companies that do classify as a TV company for the purposes of a license, you cannot find one. They do not produce one. There isn't one. So you cannot be sure. If this were a cross-examination, my questions would be, there is no definitive list, is there? So a member of the public cannot ever be sure, can they? If a member of the public cannot be sure as to whether or not this is a TV company for the purposes of a license, how can they possibly comply with the legislation without just erring on the side of caution and buying a license for the sake of it? Uh, which I think is wrong, by the way. I don't think you should have to buy a license just to be on the safe side. A lot of people do. A lot of people buy a TV license out of the fear of prosecution or even the threat of prosecution when they get the letters on the doorstep every every single week or so, or however often they come out. So my view on it is this. Ultimately, I, I come to the, the regretful conclusion that this law is flawed because in order to comply with a law that is criminal which for which you will be punished and have a record or it's not a full criminal record it's a non-recordable offense but that's by the by you can get a fine of up to a thousand pounds for non-payment of a tv license and you can then have even more significant penalties if you fail to pay that fine because that that that's worse if you don't pay the fine for an offense that's worse than the original offense usually but how can you possibly comply with the law the criminal penalties attached to a TV license if you cannot find a definitive list of companies that are considered to be TV broadcasting companies for the purposes of a television license. So there it is. An answer, not an answer. It's the answer you all ask for, but I, I accept it's not really an answer. I've done my best to find out precisely this for you. 
Um, the conclusion I come to is there is no definitive answer, as I would expect, I should expect as a lawyer. But my conclusion, therefore, is that the law must be flawed. Unless and until a definitive list of these companies is produced, I do not think that anybody can be certain that they are complying with the law. Because as they uh, readily accept, the media landscape changes continually with new market entrants and changing services, so it simply isn't possible to produce the list. So if the media landscape is changing continually with new market entrants and changing services, how on earth are you, with all respect to you, a member of the public, a viewer watching my channel now, how on earth are you supposed to comply with that legislation when the people that enforce it cannot produce the list themselves? So what do they do? Make it up? Do they make a decision on the spot and decide on, on, on an ongoing basis? Now, as I said, things like Sky News or whatever, easier to, to decide, but as they accept with new market entrants, I think that's impossible. And if it's impossible to comply with, I think it's flawed and I think it's unfair. If it's unfair, it shouldn't be enforceable. So there it is. Um, that's the lay of the land uh, as, as regards to this. That was the guidance that was given to me back in uh, October of last year. Um, that's the that's the guidance that was provided. No comment along with it, but that was the, the, the guidance. I understand that the people there in the office are um, no doubt lovely people doing their job and doing what they can, but they're working within the legislation that's provided. Um, so I do not shoot the messenger and the people working in the office there. Um, they are obviously uh, working within the legislation and the guidelines that they uh, can put out uh, based on their understanding of the law and where the law sits currently. So this, I do welcome your uh, thoughts and opinions in the comment section below because that's the law as it stands. Uh, so please leave me your thoughts and comments there. Please do uh, consider smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel to help this channel grow, to help you all understand law, because I suspect this is not the only area where it's a little bit grey and therefore ultimately, potentially, a flawed bit of law. Thank you for watching.